Hey everybody, and welcome to Fantasy Sports Insight, or FSI. I am McKinley412, and today we're going to do a little guide into NHL DFS. We'll provide you with some tips, uh, some different strategies that you can use uh, when building your lineups, and also some resources that you might want to be checking out on a daily basis uh, as you're kind of building your lines. First things first, though, uh, as with any uh, DFS site and scoring, you want to make sure how the scoring is used. I exclusively use DK, uh, but FanDuel, it's pretty similar. FanDuel is much more goal dependent, uh, whereas DK, you can get a lot more of the peripheral stats uh, and kind of get bonuses that way. So DraftKings, um, five or more shots. I, you obviously can see all the different uh, scorings for everything up here. But if a guy gets five or more shots on net, he's going to get a bonus of three DK points. Uh, think of the bonuses just like the 100-yard rushing or 100-yard receiving uh, bonus that you might get in NFL DFS. So uh, five or more shots, and really volume shooters are who you want to be targeting um, in, in NHL DFS. So you want to be focusing those guys who have that upside of five, six, maybe even seven shots uh, in a game. Uh, it's it's a bonus for a reason. You know, it is tough to get there. There's only a select few who can hit it on a routine basis, uh, but you definitely want to be paying attention to guys who have um, high shot upside. Three block shot bonus. These are typically going to be defensemen, uh, maybe even players who are on the penalty kill. There is a strategy that some people like to use, uh, especially on slates where you have a lot of like high-priced guys that you want to be putting in your lineup. Uh, but just like punting a defender who might be seeing uh, penalty kill time, so they're going to be seeing these uh, a lot of shots thrown at them. Maybe get three or more block shots because with no goals, no assists, no shots on net, if a defender at minimum price can get three block shots, including the bonus, they're going to be paying off their cash uh, salary value. Is there upside to it? Absolutely not. I do not recommend it in GPP. Uh, but some people like to use that method in cash, uh, especially on those slates where you need to get more of the high upside um, skaters because maybe value is just not as uh, available. And then three plus points. So that's three goals, no assists, or uh, no goals and three assists. However you get your name out of the score sheet three different times, uh, you're going to be getting a bonus there. So at three plus points, they're already going to be breaking the slate. Uh, so let's just add another three points on there just to break it even more because points are fun. As far as goalies go, do not stress about goalies. Build your lineup where you land at goalie. Okay, there are going to be times where like, you do not want to play certain goalies. Yes, I get it. Uh, but the majority of the time, build your lineup where you land at goalie. That's it. Um, there's It's hockey. It's on ice. It's a funky looking puck. It bounces in weird ways. You got guys on skates. Uh, deflections happen. You know, guys are shooting these pucks at 100 plus miles an hour from the blue line and guys are waving their sticks and it's going to deflect and it's going to bounce. It, the weird things happen. Um, so don't, a lot of goalie in DFS, NHL is a lot of luck. It's a lot of puck luck. I fully admit it. So you also have to be thinking about volume as well. One team that I think about is Carolina. Carolina is a team that shoots the puck a lot. And when they're shooting the puck a lot at the opposing goalie, it means that their own goalie isn't seeing a whole lot of shots. Uh, Carolina is a Stanley Cup contending team. Um, they're probably going to be favored in most of their games. Uh, but still, do you want to play the Carolina goalie who's not going to be seeing a lot of shot volume at all? And if he lets in like two goals, that could like really hurt him but he might get the win. Or do you want to play the underdog goalie facing Carolina who could easily get 35 or more shots or 35 or more saves, get the three point bonus, and he lets in like four goals? Who do you want? I mean, there's many, many times where the underdog goalie is going to be outscoring uh, that favored goalie. Now, that's an extreme case. Carolina is a very extreme team and a case when it comes to, you know, the differential in shots. Uh, more often than not, you know, shots are pretty similar amongst teams on a night-to-night -night basis. But still, it's something that you want to be paying attention to. And again, do not stress goalies. I think that's just kind of a really important uh, rule to follow by. Some different resources that you can go to to figure out which uh, goalies are going to be starting. Uh, this is the site Daily Faceoff. 
that you can see right here, starting goalies. It's going to have unconfirmed, um, and when goalies are um, announced, either at morning skate, uh, morning practice, or you know through a coaching interview, whatever it is, um, it will get updated. DraftKings will also give the green check mark to say that the goalie is confirmed at the, and that they will be starting for that night. What DraftKings does not give uh, is they do not give the green check mark to any of the skaters, any of the forwards, defensemen. It's not like in baseball where you're going to have the starting lineup getting the green check mark. It's not like the NBA in DFS where the starting five is going to get a green check mark. There is none of that in NHL DFS. So you want to make sure that you the guys you are putting into your lineup are playing. Daily Faceoff is one of these sites that you can be looking at and paying attention to. Another site is called Left Wing Lock. Uh, they will also be providing line combinations for every single team. And don't be afraid to use Twitter as well. One little trick that you could use is just type in, if you want to find like the line combinations that a team is going to be using uh, that day, um, is just typing in a couple of their players' names. So I'm just going to use the Sabres as an example here. So I'll type in Skinner. I'll type in Thompson, and I'll type in Tuck. Three skaters for the Buffalo Sabres, and immediately pops up a lot of the Sabres beat writers with their line combinations. Make sure you have the correct date, though, okay? Make sure you're paying attention to the correct date. But Mike Carrington, Lance Lizowski, uh Jordan LaBarber, all Sabres guys who follow the Sabres who are going to be posting lineups um, at game time, and will also be posting lineups at, at morning skates, at morning practices, if they have them. Uh, let's do another one. We'll type in uh, Kreider and Kako. We'll do the Rangers. Oh, there's Daily Faceoff right there. Uh, and here you go. Molly Walker, New York Alliance, uh, based on you know their morning practice report. Might give you some goalie information as well. So what you could do is if you're doing this throughout the season, just you know click these uh, beat reporters, click follow, add them to a list, however you want. And then as you kind of scroll throughout social media throughout the day, you'll be uh, seeing line changes kind of as they happen, uh, and they'll be announcing those things for you. So I've already done that. Follow all the beat writers, or at least most of them. Um, so yeah, so it's pretty easy. So make sure you're paying attention to that. You want to make sure that the people that you are playing are actually playing. So roster construction, lineup construction. How do you want to do it? How do you want to do it? Correlation is massive. I already talked about how you want to be focusing guys who have, you know, that shot upside, uh, the block shot upside, all of that. But you also want to make sure that you are correlating amongst lines. So we'll just use the Sabres as an example here. Uh, and every NHL team has four forward lines. So you can see like line one, line two, line three, line four, and three defensive pairings. A lot of times, you know, they kind of do kind of line up. But, you know, when you have four forward lines and three defensive lines, it's not always perfect. You know, there is some overlap. Uh, so like the defensive one pairing is not always going to be with the forward one uh, line. So you have to be paying attention to that. Uh, Nat Stack Trick is another website that you could be paying attention to. Um, they'll, you know, give lines. It can be very overwhelming as a site. I will just, you know, word of warning there. Uh, but it is another fantastic site that you could be using. But still, GPP, line stacks. You want to make sure that you're doing line stacks, making sure that you're playing forwards who all play on the same line, or even just, you know, adding two forwards and a defenseman who you think might be with them. So let's use the Sabres as an example. Say I want, I think the Sabres are going to be a fantastic play tonight, and I want as much exposure as I can for a GPP. Uh, so what I would do is I would probably just start with their top line. Uh, so Skinner, Thompson, and Olofsson. But there's one issue with this uh, forward group is that they all do not play on the same power play unit. So I'm really hoping that when these guys score, it's going to be at even strength and I can get that trifecta goal. I can get the goal and the two assists to go along with that. Uh, but Skinner and Thompson, they play on power play one, unit one. Uh, Olafsson does not. So you can see the first power play unit here. So you want to be making sure that when you are uh, stacking, especially in GPP, you have guys who are going to be pretty much together um, throughout the game. Is there going to be slates where like, you know, there isn't really a line uh, that has everybody at the same even strength, like everybody on the same power play unit? Absolutely. Uh, are there going to be slates where there are a couple, but like none of them are teams that you want to be paying attention to? 
absolutely. Uh, but still, that's just one thing you want to be paying attention to is, you know, are these guys together at even strength? And are these guys also together on the power play where a lot of NHL goals do happen? Um, so yeah. And then in terms of cash, you want to correlate again. Um, okay, actually go back to GPP. Go back to GPP here. Um, so instead of maybe going Skinner, Thompson, Olafson, maybe you go Skinner, Thompson, and Rasmus Dahlin. Like I said, it's not always perfect. You know, the top defensive pairing and the top forward unit with the four and three, you know, it doesn't always match up, uh, but it is still pretty close. Dahlin is going to see a lot of ice time with Skinner and with Tage Thompson. And he's also on that top power play unit with Thompson and Skinner. So maybe that is going to be your three-man trio uh, that you want to be stacking um, in GPPs. Uh, it, team, another team, we'll just use the Rangers. We were just talking about them. Uh, so maybe you, instead of going Kreider, Zibanejad, and Kako as, you know, a top-line pairing, maybe you go Kreider, Zibanejad, and Adam Fox, uh, the, one of the top defensive, offensive, offensive defensemen in the league. Um, so yeah, so GPP, just make sure you're correlating, get at least three guys in there. So you have the possibility of the trifecta goal. You get the goal and the two assists, uh, with players in your lineup. In terms of cash, you still want to be making sure you are correlating. It is not, I do not recommend full line stacking in cash. I would choose two of the three guys that I want to be targeting and go from there. If I want to add a third guy, I probably would be going down to a different line that also correlates to the power play unit. So what I mean by that is, say I really like Buffalo um, in cash games. Okay, I want to be playing them, but I want it to be in cash. I'm not looking for, you know, a crazy high ceiling. I just want to make sure that I'm safe, uh, but also getting exposure to the Sabres team. So I would start with Jeff Skinner and Tage Thompson. You know, those would be your top two uh, players uh, for Buffalo here. But then I would also probably lean down to a guy like Alex Tuck. Uh, so Alex Tuck is on the second line. He's not going to be skating with Tage Thompson or Jeff Skinner at even strength, but he skates with them on the power play. So if there is a power play goal, I have the upside opportunity to get the trifecta goal, the goal and both assists. Say Tage Thompson scores and it's assisted by Skinner and Tuck. 20 DK points right there. But say it's an even strength goal. What can happen from there? Well, if it's not line one, Maybe the second line scores it, and Alex Tuck can still get in on there, either through a goal or an assist. Uh, so cash, it's not as dependent, uh, you know, with you know correlating and stacking. Obviously, I mean that's DFS 101. Uh, but one little trick that I like to use, uh, especially in cash games, if there's one team that I really want to be loaded up on, is pick two guys, you know, from their top lineup that you want to target. But then maybe pick a guy from a different line that also shares the same um, power play unit as them. If you don't want to use, you know, a different forward, you can use a different defenseman. So maybe, you know, you can go back to the Rasmus Dahlin to go along with Skinner and Thompson um, kind of thing. So that kind of covers it. You want to be focusing guys with volume. You know, that's going to be the big thing. Guys with opportunity. You want to be playing guys that get power play time. A lot of NHL goals are scored on the power play. So if your skater that you're looking at doesn't get any power play time, you're losing a lot of opportunity there. So focus guys who are going to be playing on the power play, either power play one or power play two. Defensemen, you want to be paying attention to guys who um, get a lot of ice time, guys who get 20 or more minutes of ice time. They're going to have the opportunity to block a lot of shots. If they're on the penalty kill, a bonus, I mean, awesome. They're going to be seeing a lot of shots thrown their way if they're on the penalty kill. Excuse me. And you also have to be paying attention because there are defensemen in the league who score just as much as a lot of forwards or shoot the puck as much as any other forwards. I'm thinking of guys like Roman Yossi. Uh, the guy is, he throws up numbers that many forwards in the NHL can't even produce. Uh, so yeah, so with defensemen, there are some guys who can get the shot bonus as well as the shot block bonus. But they're super pricey. They're going to cost you a pretty penny uh, if you are going up that high. But as always, I mean, you want to make sure you are correlating with all of your lines. So hopefully this guide was helpful for you guys, uh, at least guiding you. 
I'm going to use it twice, guiding you in the right direction uh, to help you build your lines. Follow me on Twitter, uh, at McKinley underscore 412. Uh, I got my DMs open. Feel free to message me if you have any questions. Um, and yeah, so come check us out at FSI. The links, they're all down in the description below. Um, we, we don't also... We also provide many other sports. Uh, it's not just NHL. We provide all of them, all the major sports, even the fringe sports. Um, we got coaches for all of them. So come check us out. We'd love to have you. Um, but yeah, so good luck in all of your contests this season. We'll be having preview videos out uh, for the majority of the slates. So please come check that out as well. So good luck in your contests. And hopefully we will see you in another video.